Right, we're up and running. Hey, everyone, Lee Ashby here from uh, Motocross and Speedway Memories. Uh, just want to make a quick thank you. Big thanks to for the support to Simon Pardo of uh, White Eagle Finance. They give quality financial advice for pensions, investments, mortgages and protection. You can check their website at www.whiteeaglefinance.co.uk. Right, I've got an amazing Speedway interview for you this evening. I've got a major German Speedway legend of all time and long track world champion as well. But what a rider this man is and what an entertainer and a character as well, Mr. Martin Smolinski. How's it going, mine? I'm good. I'm fine. You know, just uh, the only bad thing is I can't race at the moment properly. You know, I still got some issues with my leg and... Uh, but I'm feeling quite okay. I'm on the right way. You know, it's nice to talk to you tonight and, uh, you know, see what's happening. Obviously, we've got you in the background here look, as well. Fucking looks good, you know. Guys. Me, it's, like, it's a bit crazy <laughs> because it looks like, you know, I'm just starting into mindset myself, you know. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's quite a bit you, like, yeah. uh, what he's doing there, I'm thinking, <laughs> you know. But, uh, uh, love, you. You, love your setting there in your uh, man cave there with all the trophies and all your Kevlar's and everything. Trophies looks amazing. Yeah, it's quite nice, you know, I've got like a small main cave, you know, like on the bottom of here is my workshop and uh, it's quite nice, you know, we had a good decision, we have two houses and uh, one house is only the workshop and uh, normally like a living room or like a flat for the mechanics and even my man cave or even my place to be, especially in the winter because uh, in the winter I put my uh, my pedal bike here like just uh, on the on the wheel spinner and uh, I'm doing my doing my hours here in the winter. And it's quite nice, you know, even uh, even my kids coming over, we play here, uh, we can do some sporting, I've got the uh, punching bag here, so it's quite cool. And uh, behind me, all my trophies, uh, nearly all my racing suits I had, I missed some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it started, you know, I got a very, very, very small one on the completely on the left side, I think. This is uh, was my first one when I was, uh, I must be, think, uh, nine years old, I think, or eight years. So uh, before I was using motocross, uh, Racewear, so but that was my really first racing suit. I bought some racing suits back because uh, mm -hmm. when I saw sometimes the Moto GP riders when they collect all their stuff, you know, like yeah, yeah, Valentin yeah. Rossi or Mark Marquez, it's unbelievable what they're doing. So I think I need to do the same. So, uh, yeah, 100%. you know, in the, in the young days, you know, I need to earn some money because I sold my racing <laughs> suits after the year and then I think oh, I need them back, you know. So <laughs> some of them I bought back for quite a, a lot of money. But there's still one racing suit I'm missing, and I would love to have it back because uh, I missed one racing suit from the Birmingham Brummies, and they oh, went yeah. out for auction. Uh, I think when we must be 2010 or 11, I'm not sure 100%. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, it went out for auction, and when someone is out there and got this racing suit, you know, hanging up in his living room, yeah. if I would can get it, he can contact me. I would love to have it back. I don't know where is it. So this is a bit. This is a good time to advertise that because obviously this is yeah, going to go yeah, out to yeah. all the UK fans as well. So yeah, 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 you know. So hopefully oh. we'll get that Birmingham Brummies uh, Kevlar's back to you then at some point. Yes, yes, that would be nice. You know, even I would pay for it. You know, so no worries. Yeah. So, so uh, anyone can message me. All the guys, I'll spread it all throughout the UK, and then uh, if anyone can get in contact with either of us, uh, we can sort that out. No problem. That's a top job from you. That'd be good. That'd be good. That'd be a good aim to do. I really appreciate your time, mate, for doing this. Uh, always time for interviews. It's good to support the sport and uh, we have to work together, you know, even in the new times and uh, even in the Corona time where it's everything a bit, uh, sometimes for, especially for you fans, a little bit boring. Mm. And, you know, I really appreciate uh, you to do something like that. And uh, I just followed you a little bit the last days and you had also some very good voice out there. <laughs> and I think it's quite interesting even for the fans to, yeah you know, have a talk with me, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's going to be really interesting. Everyone's looking forward to this, including myself, mate. It's an absolute pleasure to speak to you and meet you. So I'm going to get into the questions with you. Uh, my first one is how did you get into Speedway and what is your earliest memory of the sport? Oh, uh, in these days, I must be think a long time back. I think I come into the Speedway even uh, when I was like, uh, like uh, in, in the baby case, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. My parents, uh, my mom and my dad, been very involved in the Speedway Club here in Orking. Uh, they've been big Speedway supporters. Uh, even they went uh, before I didn't been born. They went over to England. Uh, mm. they, they watched Speedway over there, so they've been uh, like really big Speedway fans. And uh, they've been even quite involved in the Speedway Club and, and the Orking here. My daddy was race director. My, my mom was always helping there. And it was like a big, a big family at the club, you know, like so. All, uh, all the people there, and when it started, I think it was 1988. At this days, I've been four years old, 
uh, some other young boys been coming and racing uh, with kids' bikes, you know. And uh, I had my first junior license. It was 1989, so I was five years old. So that was uh, quite nice. It was yeah. the first stamp in, in, the, uh, in, my, in my license, you know, so yeah, that's yeah. quite nice. And that's the way how it started, you know. And then since 1990, kids are allowed to race uh, in Germany or to do some proper races. And I was the first one in the club. And I'm just being, you know, my dream was to be a motorcycle racer and even a speedway profi. And, uh, you know, that's here I am now. And this is, uh, I don't want to miss any minute of it. And I would like to thank you very much to my family, to my parents, and even to all my supporters who helped me out throughout the way that I can be here now. And uh, this is very nice. And, uh, uh, but the young days been very, um, I, I, you know, if I think back, it's quite nice, even with the times. And uh, yeah. it was an awesome time and uh, it's nice. Did you, did you mention that you uh, rode some motocross bikes as well, did you? Yeah, we know. I started on motocross bikes, you know, in the oh, young right, days okay. we had, uh, we had like a PW50, the same bike yeah. what they're using in Denmark, you know, yeah. then I had a PW80, like uh, it's a half automatic bike and uh, yeah. there's no clutch. And uh, 1996, I get sponsored, the, like it's all motocross bikes, you know, I get sponsored. Oh. I had a, I had a uh, old man is, uh, you know, it's Martin Huber. He was a very awesome guy. He's, uh, he sponsored me in Kawasaki KX60. So like a properly motocross bike with yeah. 15 horsepower and uh, that's been awesome, you know. Yeah, yeah, six years <laughs> like bam, 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 yeah. bam, you know, nice, you know. So, Lovely, yeah. And uh, that was nice. And uh, I even had always sometimes to be on the motocross bike. So for, in these days, I think it was good for the kids. Now mm. the kids, I think like always when they start speed, they, they straight up to a 125 speeder bike. And, uh, but, you know, we had time. We were sitting in the motocross bike. Uh, I could go on the, on the field from a farmer. I can just play around. I could jump around. Uh, I had some friends. Or even it's called uh, Max Nagel. He was racing MX1 oh, yeah, yeah. from the motocross guys. Maybe you oh, know him. Yeah, you know him yeah, well. Yeah. So, he's, you know, we grew up together. So, he was racing speedway. Oh, I was racing motocross. So, uh, he was so it's been good. always. And that's been good days, you know, with the motocross bikes, you know. So, we had some fun. And I still, you know, I like to sit on a motocross bike. Awesome, awesome. Because I have noticed that a lot of the a lot of the speedway guys uh, do a lot of motocross even for training, don't they? As well, obviously physical side. Yeah, it's a it's a quite a good practice over the winter, mm. but uh, it's you can see it on two ways. Uh, an old man of mine says to me, "You're a speed rider, <laughs> so you have to only race speedway, nothing else." You know, because mm. when you sit on a motocross bike, you do it different. So, uh, have but to be a bit careful, winter, especially yeah. especially beginning, and you know, we had some bad accidents on the motocross bike. Yeah, uh, we know it's about Lee Adams and uh, mm. so some bad guys, or so even yeah. Thomas Gorb. You know, I just uh, it's been very sad about the boys mm. uh, to see them like that. But I mean, that's a life. But uh, I like to be on a motocross bike, especially only in the winter or beginning of the season, to get loose, to feel the feeling, to you know, yeah. to get your arm pump away, to just uh, have a little bit of fun. But between the season, I don't really sit on the motocross bike because. Uh, then I have to focus on speedway, and it's very important to just, uh, uh, you know, working on the maximum limit. Okay, brilliant. Uh, next one I got for you. What riders, uh, what speedway riders did you look up to and idolize when you were young? And did you ever get to race any of your heroes and idols? Uh, that's quite a simple question. Uh, it's it's okay. a nice question because uh, my hero was Simon Wick. Uh, yeah. uh, he was the man. Uh, yeah, very good. But I've been too young to really race against him. Uh, when he died and when he mm. passed away so that's been a very sad time mm -hmm. but he was my hero you know when i was a small boy you know um, uh, he was so so easy to to the fans you know i've been racing like in the in the 60 like in the, with the motocross bike and yeah. he's been traveling a lot around the germany simon and we always we nearly met him every weekend and uh, we had some uh, you know at these days uh, you could walk into him and you can ask for autograph and even Five seconds after race, he's been always friendly. You could ask him questions. He was very, uh, uh, he was like, a, uh, like a, um, very friendly people, you know, to everyone, you know. So he never had a bad uh, attitude, or and he was just, he was for me a per he was a hero, you know. Uh, especially I had some, I can remember some stuff because uh, especially at Berghaupen, it's lost. Uh, it's called the Berghaupen Super Cup. It's one of uh, very, it's an open international meeting. Yeah. Uh, and it's quite a big, it's a 800 meter grass track and it's a quick one. And he was winning this trophy a couple of times. And uh, and I was always, when I was a small boy, I went 
we have you know, on the grass turf, you have more time than a speed track. The pits are open, so you can walk in there, you know, and you can say, I can have autographs. So I walk to every single rider always. And uh, uh, we had some riders that have been very unfriendly to us kids, you know, they just mm -hmm. uh, they kicked us out, they've been swearing about us, you know, and even. And you can walk into Simon, and uh, that was awesome. And that was he gave me. I would like to give back the kids now because yeah. uh, sometimes it's not easy when you between the race. But uh, I mean, if kids is coming and ask for autograph, you know, I know I never mind. So he's uh, uh, he was I'm, my hero, I, you know. I loved uh, all the green uh, green levers and the white arrow helmets he had. And give me one second, I can show you some. You know, he had always like some yeah yeah especially etches on on his racing suit, and I had yeah uh, go for it yeah. I missed some, but I can show you. Uh, uh, I put out some. I mean, if you look about this style here, the, the, the etcher, Simon had the same. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. He had this, uh, that is a Simon Wick style, you know? It's like yeah, the green yeah. letters, you know? So when I was a young boy, I was, I yeah. know, it was like green and pink, but that's just, uh, that's, but that, that was a Simon Wick style, you know? I just. Uh, when I, liked, I, you know? when, when I advertised your uh, interview in the group, I actually put a picture up of you in that. Okay. Yeah, one of the pictures yeah, I found. Cool. One of the pictures I found of you was in okay, that when you were young. Good. So I posted uh, that as well. So that's pretty cool. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, really awesome. cool, really cool. I had yeah. one. I got one more of them, but they've been. This, this is a Kefla one, but I got also a leather one. But this we cut it once for like uh, for the circus. You know, circus. Uh, yeah. uh, what is circus uh, in English? Uh, circus. Uh, I don't know the name is like where uh, they always build up a tent, you know, and uh, circus, uh, uh, circus Roncalli. Uh, give me one second. Uh, where, they, where they, you know, we can see uh, Lou. Uh, I'm crazy at the moment now. Too much. Uh, doesn't matter, you know. But we it cut one to, of yeah. them. We cut one of them, and this is. Uh, it went sad, you know, so I couldn't get it back, but you know, shit happens. It actually reminds me of you, actually. You're like very professional, very well turned out, good with the fans, that sort of thing. It's, it's, it means a lot. It's quite nice, you know. I mean, uh, I see the fans for as a speed rider, it's the most important thing we can see now. Uh, a lot of clubs have been struggling, or even I'm sure it will be a problem for the next year uh, because the, fa the, the, the clubs are running without fans. Uh, yeah. Without fans, we can't race. We have some good sponsors, or the team's got some good sponsors. But uh, at the end, we need your fans, you know, to be like even to pay my wages, you know, because how more fans are come, it's my wages. And uh, so, uh, no fans, no wages. It's a simple way. Yeah, that's it for sure. Right. Okay. Next one I got for you. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of the UK fans will be there, so we're obviously going to mention the British League a bit. Who were the toughest riders that you competed against when you raced in the British League racing days, and why? So well, that's Covent, Coventry, Birmingham, isn't it? Okay, I think the toughest riders I think I was racing against uh, yeah. was Hans Anderson. Mm. Uh, these days we had some. Uh, oh, uh, he punched me sometimes, or he kicked me out, or he <laughs> just there was not many space sometimes, you know. So <laughs> yeah. I had some, I had some issues with him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah, and team, I would say I had always a little bit trouble with Rory Schlein. Okay. Uh, we've been a lot of that Coventry days, you know, we've been racing together yeah. and uh, he never, you know, you build up the speed. I always had to, oh, I remember, you know, first heat, I had to stand on the outside and, uh, but uh, he always closed me the door so much that there was no space for my front wheel. So, uh, and uh, sorry for the swearing about that and that pissing me off so much sometimes, you know, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you can say one day, you want, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and one day I think I nearly punched him, you know, and Billy, Billy Schneider had to stop me because I've been so angry about him, you know, and it is, uh, at the end, we are racing for our money, you know, and yeah, then your yeah. teammate blocks you out and you go come from nearly first to last, you know, this is, uh, but, uh, at the end, you know, I think, uh, we all speed riders. Uh, I'm not the man who's making too much friendship with other riders because I'm not there to make a friendship. Uh, I got very good friends at home here. Yeah. Uh, I'm out there for racing. You know, this is my business. Okay, fair enough. Uh, next one I got for you was: Is there been a certain bike or an engine that you've rode over the years that was a, become a bit of a favorite? And if so, can you remember the sort of engines or bikes oh, that's been favorites? I I had one, you know, I had one. Okay, it's a, okay. It's, it's a, there's a small story behind it, you know. Okay, cool. When I was starting for Birmingham in 2000, no, must be 2000, 
2011 or 2012, you know. Okay. And uh, I was thinking what I can do. I'm always quite interested in speed by engine tuning, and uh, I done my, some of my stuff self. And but I've never really been so happy with my engines in England. And then I think I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. And uh, and always like you know I didn't have the, I tried to always keep the money together, and I don't want to spend more than I have. So. Uh, I looked for some used engines, but other riders like sold. And I know Chris Harris at this time, he was a speedway compressor, and uh, he had so much stuff to test and trying, and he sold two engines. Okay. So first I think I want to buy one, and then I think, ah, you know, he made me a good price. I can say at these days I, I spent 3,000, I think it means 3,500 quid, you know, for two engines. Okay. Uh, and then we, uh, then uh, I had a good mechanic. It was uh, Mick Shepard, or like uh, even the Shepard family. The Shepards are... Still involved in Speedway. Uh, there's a whole family. The father was mechanic for Billy Hamill, and uh, that's okay. an awesome family. We're still very good friends, you know. Okay. And then he said, Martin, come on, you know, we should try to do everything around. And uh, come on, we give the engine for a check for Eddie Bull. And uh, Eddie done my engines then, so we serviced the engine with Eddie Bulls, uh, you know. And that's been awesome because I started the season, and uh, I think after six, after eight meetings, uh, I had like. Uh, at these days, I had an uh, like a 11.2 average, you know. So that's yeah. been awesome. So the yeah. engine at the end, my engine been paid uh, after two meetings, you know. So that's been for me, uh, you know. I had a used engine from Chris Harris, and uh, I beat everyone as I passed everyone. Everyone says I had 600 CCM, but that's been just <laughs> old days. But that's been only uh, that's been only uh, you know used an old engine from Chris Harris. He didn't like them, and I love them. Uh, you know, oh, and wow. after two meetings, after two times, I think, or eight, I had 18 points, I got 18, 19, 20, I've been using, you know, I come from from, from reserve to number one, you know, so that's been yeah. a an, uh, an very good year for me, and I really enjoyed it, and that, uh, and the name of the engine was, yeah, all my engines got a name, you know, oh, and right. the engine, yeah, yeah, every, every, you know, maybe with yeah, your yeah. time later, you can walk this, down, yeah. We can walk down in my workshop and I like to give all the engines a name because so you have a little bit of a feeling for them, you know, okay, yeah. because it's uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> it could be every engine have a character, you know, so okay, yeah, yeah, and throughout yeah. the character or even I, I not only give them a name, I just did all they have to be a, there need to be a story behind the name. Yep. Uh, and I gave the engine, this was the best engine. Oh, I got some, one second, there's a phone call coming in. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Can you stop for a second, or can we? Uh... Ah, it's gone now. It's gone now. Maybe. No. Okay. 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 I don't know if I can switch it off, but normally no one should call me. So. Uh... Yeah. But... <laughs> ah, we will see. You know. Uh, and then the, the name of the engine was EB1. You know. So that's okay. called Eddie Bull One. You know. So Eddie Bull One. Okay. Eddie Bull One. You know. And I must <laughs> say, uh, we had uh, Eddie Bull One was one of the. Uh, was one of the best engine uh, I was I was, I was raced, you know. I loved the engine. Uh, I could sc I could score awesome. It wasn't the best skating engine. Uh, I always have to come from the back, but at the end I passed oh, everyone from the back. So uh, I, you know, I had some some days or some meetings at Coventry uh, or even at, at Birmingham. I, I played with the boys, you know. So it doesn't matter who it was. I just I passed them left, right, you know, where I want, you know. So that being uh, EV1 was a good engine, and it's, it's a shame. Uh, we, we are, you know, when I left England, uh, I sent the engine for a different engine tuner for service, and uh, and when it comes back, it wasn't this what it was before. But uh, mm -hmm. and it's very sad that Eddie Poole is uh, finished with Speedway, so yeah. uh, he's just doing some road racing, vintage vintage bikes he's doing still. And uh, I tried to contact him two years ago, and uh, but it was one of one of our best engines I had. What did uh, did Chris Harris end up doing that? Like, what the hell's going on? Did he try to buy the engine back? <laughs> oh, he he went crazy. Hey? You oh, know, we had the work. We had yeah, and, uh, I know before, but you know, at the before we had the, uh, the workshops next to each other. But yeah. always when uh, you know, he he went crazy about me. He's like, okay, hey, yeah. it can't be. And I I I you know when when he want to sell, he couldn't sell it. You know, so and you know, I I put a lot I put the sump on the price you know so he want to have more for the engines but I put the sump on the price you know <laughs> and I, you know and I had a, you know the price was perfect I must say you know we, yeah, but yeah. he you know he you know for me it was good it was for him good he could sell the engines yeah. and uh, but he hated he hated me for that you know but, you know <laughs> in, in a friendly way you know I <laughs> yeah. say, can't believe you know hey you're a bloody fucking German man buying two old engines <laughs> for me you know and then he's going out there, scoring 21 points. You, you know, it, it only takes you two meetings to pay the engines, you know. So, hey, oh. what do you want? He's like, hey, 
sorry, Chris, you know, but, you know, but we had, you know, it was like That's always, uh, always a good story. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, what were your favourite tracks in the British League and why? Oh, the favourite track, you know, the favourite track is always this track where you can score points, you know, and uh, sometimes it's all about the track, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, some yeah. tracks are changing, Operation. but yeah, uh, I really like to race at Coventry. Uh, Coventry was an awesome track, or it, it's still an awesome track, and it's you know I'm just uh, fingers crossed for Coventry, uh, yeah. uh, uh, and even big fingers crossed for the you know, uh, Jeff Davis. You know he's working hard yeah. to get his ward back there. But Coventry was uh, even that the tracks are raced been very very nice in the Coventry. But even in the old days, uh, I fancy even quite the uh, Bellevue. Right. Bellevue was also like the old Bellevue track. It yeah, was yeah. Uh, we was winning the league there 2005. You know. Uh, and that been an awesome memory, and the track was very special. But then, the, when he had the right setup on the track and the right engines, it was so awesome to race on there. So that was quite nice. So, uh, any others around the world, Europe, that you really like? At the end, it's uh, you know you're racing on so much different tracks, yeah. and uh, I think uh, if you're a professional rider, you have to race on every single track. Uh, if you you know you can win on every track, you can't say oh the track is bad, you know. But you always had some riders stay better than you, so you have to think why they're better than me and why they can race better on this track, or if maybe they they work harder, they do some different things. So I quite uh, there's some more would say I don't have a very really fancy fancy race track, you know. I like to race in Germany. Uh, we have nice tracks over here. I like to race in Poland, you know. It's uh, at the end it doesn't matter, you know. Uh, so always the place where you're winning, you you know you must like the track. Was there any in the UK you didn't didn't weren't too keen on or? Oh, I hated Arena Essex. No, no, oh, no, yeah. no, 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 stop, 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 not Arena. Okay. Eastbourne, 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 Eastbourne. Eastbourne. Arena Essex, I had a lot of up and downs. I think okay. one one day the, the Arena Essex have been like super flying quick, and the, yeah. and the next one I've been scoring maybe zero, 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 so nothing. <laughs> uh, but at Eastbourne, I never really. I think at Eastbourne. I remember I never could put the really I never put my my legs on the floor properly there. I never really been comfortable with the track. That track being for me, to be honest, uh, when I'm thinking about it right now, it was horrible. <laughs> yeah, they got to some serious specialists. I actually just uh, interviewed Martin Dugard the other day, and obviously he was a specialist there for sure. Oh yes, and you know <laughs> if, if, if if this is your home track, you know it's, yes, uh, and... <laughs> it's awesome. You know it's yeah, nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is uh, this question is actually quite good because you've got them all in the background. Uh, but have you had a favourite set of leathers or Kevlar's that you've wore during your racing days that were a bit, a bit of a favourite? Wow! Wow! <laughs> well, now you have to think about you know. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh... <laughs> so many. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's hard. You know when I'm, it's better. I'm not sure we can don't really see the right side, you know. It's it's nearly it's not hundred percent the right in the right years, you know, but I just uh, yeah. turn you a little bit around here now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when you look here now, you know, it, this is uh, the last no, it's not the last one, it's this is this is from twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Faluba's race suit. Uh, there's my this is one of my favorite, I would say. This is my long track world championship race suit when I was winning the world title. Yep. Uh, the third one from the right side uh, yep, that's been yep. very nice very then nice, yeah. you can see still behind me it's like my speed on free race suit you know 2014 yep. it was a uh, uh, nice remember there you know I would love to be back there even this year And uh, but I could win in New Zealand and every single of this one there I have some uh, you know that's not a special one I would say uh, yeah. it's uh, I'm, I'm happy to have uh, to have them all and yeah. uh but uh, it's not a special one because when I'm, I need to sometimes, I had in my brain to need to make some small notice on every single racing suit, what I was winning with it, you know. So uh, I've been German champion uh, seven times now. Yeah. I had uh, European championships, uh, PS championships, team long track world championships. So uh, so many. Oh. A lot of special uh, ones, yeah. A lot of special ones. So I need to mm. write down on which race <laughs> yeah. I was winning and which year. So it's sometimes not yeah. easy, but it takes always time, you know. Yeah, that's, uh, it, that's it. That's it. And even to have all the, you know. Maybe maybe people. when you retire, you can do all that. Yeah, this is all. Be cool, you know, wouldn't it? Be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. I got some. I would like to build, you know. We, I got some stuff in my brain. What I would, you know, do yeah. soon, you know. I got some ideas uh, to make this a bit more. Uh, even something like this more visible in the fans, like with a, 
like it's a big shop, you know. So where we got a sales area, and even all the trophies are in there, and all the racing bikes. And uh, so I still have some of my bikes, so it's quite, uh, you know. But there's no place to 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 advertise them at the moment, so I need to yeah, build yeah. some something bigger. Yeah, for sure. I'm just thinking. I did. I haven't got this down as a question, but while I'm thinking about it, because I ask all the motocross riders, because they obviously generally use numbers a lot. But the number eighty-four. What uh, what does that mean to you, and why do you have the number eighty-four? Oh, it's quite simple. I'm born eighty-four. You know. All ah, right. It's very, so it's like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very, it's very simple way. And uh, okay, I yeah. think uh, when you look back and when you think about the the racing number. Mm -hmm. Or even when you look back about the years, uh, mm -hmm. when I was starting 2014 in the Speedway Grand Prix, that was the first year when we've been racing with racing numbers in the Speedway Grand Prix. Yeah. Uh, I've been, two years before, I've, I've already been racing in Germany with racing numbers. Normally in the Speedway, you always had the numbers 1 to 16. Mm -hmm. or, and that's been always bad for advertising. You never know what you are. For the kids, it's the simplest way to having a number. And uh, and we had some. I got some quite quite good marketing boys. Uh, I had they helped me a lot. And we've been sitting down and uh, look. The best example is uh, Valentin Rossi with the 46. Mm -hmm. And we think you know, what we can use, which number we can use. And uh, in Germany, uh, it's sometimes not so easy with the numbers. Well, you know, some numbers you shouldn't use because they have a different meaning. About okay. especially. Uh, you know, the World War II time, you know, so yeah, it's a yeah. little bit hard. So there's so many thinking you have to think about. And uh, yeah, yeah. at the end, we come to the position 80, you know, to be my, in a year of born, 84. It's a good number. You can use it good. Uh, you can spell it, uh, you know, quite good. Uh, this is all, you know, it's quite been okay, you know, so it's been simple. And uh, we made, uh, I made at these days, even Greg Hancock's mechanic even make one or two years before and question to be his eye, why we can't use racing numbers. And mm -hmm. uh, and then we sitting together and uh, I made the same letter 2014. I was sending a, a big letter to the to be his eye and yep. ask, uh, can we use uh, like a racing number, you know? So, okay. and I put a lot of points on it, why we should use it. It's for marketing, it's better for BSI. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you look now, you know, it's just, it's, it's a standard yeah. now, you know? So, yeah, but I've right. been one of the first one who've been, you know, I had the 84 and all my stuff and, uh, you know, in the old days uh, in Germany, people hate me for that, you know, <laughs> uh, and they've been choking, choking about me. I look about the man with 84, you know, like some, but at the end, now that everyone using his racing number. Yeah. So I think it was a good step we done. Yeah, very good. That is very good. And it's very professional and it gives you an identity, merchandise, endless sort of yes. thing. It's, it's, a, it's very good. It's very know. good. Very good. Um, do you have any superstitions or anything that you have to specifically do on race days? <laughs> uh, yes and no, you know. Okay. I always, uh, before the race or before I put on my racing suit, I always make like a very small nap. Uh, oh, okay. Even uh, always been, always mostly in the ground, it's a bit different, but in England, uh, or even when we're racing, uh, team racing, like in the league racing, uh, I'm always the first one in the dressing room uh, and always just I like to be alone in the dressing room for like mostly it's it's happened like five minutes uh, at Coventry I had my small bench there you know so I've been uh, uh, I remember I had like no place really really where I can sit I had a small old uh, chair so I I went to the called the B and Q shop oh yeah it's a B and Q you know the, oh, yeah, the gardening shop yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to B and Q and I bought me like a small like a bench you know like a garden bench it was like in a sellout <laughs> and I placed placed it me on the on my side and uh, I left it there and one week later some other rider been there you know so oh, this is my spot now I say and I've been such a bit unhappy and I kicked him properly away from my spot and because <laughs> I could lay on there, you know, like for five minutes before the first heat and always uh, or before I get dressed. And this is like something, some superstition I do a little bit, you know, before just like a small nap, come into myself, uh, think about the race day, leave all the problems behind you, what you have in your brain. And it's just uh, focus on your racing, do what you can do the best, uh, just play everything around what you have to do and then you go out, you know, pull on your racing suit and and then it's like uh, switch on, you know, switch on the racing brain and go. And even this is a small thing I have. And the next point I have, I'm the relaxedest man always before the racing, mm -hmm. uh, when I'm walking around, even two minutes before the heat. But when I put my helmet on, I put my helmet on. And in this moment, I know 
there can be standing anyone next to me and ask me some questions. I don't care. Mm -hmm. The only one I'm listening to in this days when I put my helmet on is my mechanic, you know. So uh, then we have like uh, mostly a very uh, uh, autonomic or like even like a, a feeling to each other when the helmet is on. You know, now we are like we have business. to work together. He pushed me. Now we're in business. You know, mm -hmm. we make a short check. Everything clutches. Everything good. Throttle is good. Uh, put on the fuel is like in step, 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 and then we go out and we do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I'm with you. Um, you obviously enjoy the long track uh, racing, and obviously you've amazingly been world champion as well, which is uh, unreal. Uh, what's your memory of winning that, and uh, how different is it to Speedway for you? Uh, <laughs> it's a big different. Uh, mm. We go first to the winning point of view. Uh, this is it was a very hard season for me. Uh, I've been winning the World Championship uh, in Germany in Mühldorf. Uh, it was a last heat decider. You know, we had Dimitri Berchet or Martin Grinz. He could win the World Championship, and you know, uh, I beat him in the final. Uh, I went out to the fence. I touched the fence, and uh, if you're under this pressure, but you're in a tunnel, you know, so I've been working very hard to be world champion. Uh, and I had an awesome team behind me and uh, that's been unbelievable, you know. Mm. Uh, and I really enjoyed, you know, if you, you know, if you pass the finish line, it's like, um, I would say, uh, I promised my mom when she died when I was 14 years old, I will be world champion. Uh, and I would say, I can cry right now because uh, yeah. I went out uh, past the finish line and been uh, it was uh, very emotional. Uh, uh, it was very emotional for me, and uh, this one lap of honor I done after I finished the finish line, uh, I couldn't wave. You know, I just uh, I've been somewhere else. You know? I could feel there been some people up watching me, and uh, I special. could feel that. That's really that's special. Awesome. Really special. The bad thing, one year later, uh, yep. I could win the World Championship uh, a bit more easy, I think, one year later. But uh, uh, but I've been, uh, you know, uh, we had one race at Roden, like at the, the, you know, the final. And I've been, my brain wasn't there properly. I had a lot of problems before. I've been crashing in the speeder before. Uh, I wasn't focused on us. Uh, then I was crashing there. I broke my collarbone. Uh, I mean, I just been stupid, you know. So uh, I didn't been uh, I didn't been there, you know. At the end, I must say I could win the second world title in 2019, but uh, it was my own fault. I couldn't win it. So this is, uh, you know, because I didn't been my brain was there wasn't there properly. Okay, fair enough. Um, you won the oh, British. Yeah. Oh, you say you say compared to speed to long drive. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah the yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think it's always a big difference between speed and long trick, you know. I think mm -hmm. I'm one of the only rider uh, in, the, in the new days, you know, new area, uh, who is racing on the highest level in speedway and racing on the highest level on the long trick. Because uh, the most riders, uh, I mean, we can look back. We had Jonas Kilmerkopi. Yeah. Jonas Kilmerkopi was winning he's five yeah. long trick world championships, but he never been in a speedway Grand Prix. So he's... Uh, <clears throat> He'd been good on long track, but on a speed, he was a good speed rider. Yeah, and he's yeah, an yeah. awesome guy, but he never really made a step into the speed Grand Prix. Yeah. And uh, at the moment, I'm the only one who's racing on, you know, a long track world championship and speed world championship. So this is uh, uh, the only rider. As a rider, it's sometimes very hard to, I must say, to change, especially the first couple of laps when you've been a properly thousand meter long track, you're standing there, you know, <laughs> uh, you know flat out, put the hat down, you know, put your <laughs> ass back. Uh, and uh, like, uh, like Bartos Schwarzlich done it, you know, at the Prague yeah, Grand Prix. Yeah, the so weekend, yeah. you've been watching me, I think, you, you know, <laughs> put the ass back, you know. Yeah. So that's been good. And, uh, you know, it's always hard the first lap, especially when you go from long track and then you sit on a speeder bike. The bike is very small and then you go to a small track and, uh, you know, it goes also quickly. Sometimes yeah. uh, a bit hard, uh, so it's sometimes not so easy to to do this uh, to change your personal situation. And I must say, for me, at the moment I'm racing speedway and long track, but at the moment the level what we have in the speedway right now uh, to be in the speedway Grand Prix. That's the reason why I decided I only race long track Grand Prix, only the Grand Prix. And focus would say to to ninety pros on speedway because uh, if you have you change your mind sometimes your racing style it you have to be like in a flow you know and if you you know if you jump from speedway to long track and go back this is sometimes you, you cut off your flow a little bit 
and uh, you know I want to be you know in this video Grand Prix one of the best boys. So this is still my dream, uh, you know, and we will see what's happening. Okay, very interesting. Uh, you won the British Elite League uh, title with the Coventry Bees, uh, including I've got down the Craven Shield and the Elite League Knockout Cup. Uh, yes. What what do you remember of that time with the Coventry Bees? It was obviously very successful for you. Oh, we had in two thousand five. We uh, we made a tri we made triple. You know, we've been an awesome team. Uh, we had, uh, I would say, the whole setup. You know, I was I was still a young boy. I was nineteen years old. Uh, uh, I made the decision to move over to England when I was nineteen. Uh, I went in my car, I drove over there. I had no mechanic. I've been alone. The the Coventry says, yeah, no problem. You know, we get the mechanic, but uh, I didn't get at the first nothing. So I've been traveling around uh, alone to the racetrack and racing there, washing my bikes, everything itself. But it was an awesome time. Okay. And to winning this uh, the the Elite League Championship 2005, that been an awesome memory because. Uh, uh, the team spirit, what we have, but the work together with the mechanics, uh, with the fans, with, uh, uh, with the organizers, uh, with the team managers. Uh, we had these days uh, uh, Peter, o P uh, Peter Oaks. Uh, mm -hmm. We had Colin Pratt, you know, like uh, the bad man, Colin Pratt speaking very <laughs> bad English. I couldn't really understand him. So he was a good man, you know. So Colin was a very, very good lad, or even Peter Oaks. And then we had the after Shandu, the, the owner of the Coventry yeah. Beast at these days and the owner of the stadium, uh, or even the track man, Garris, you know. So even the whole the whole family, even uh, uh, the speed we support the club, uh, it, the fans, you know, it's been like an awesome memory with the fans are working together. We had in the rules after every home meeting, we have to go in the bar. Uh, and even for five minutes, it was we had to go. That was in the contract. Okay. We need to spend time with the fans and yeah. uh, just to build up a relationship. And that was, I must say, for me personally, I think uh, the at these days, the backup from the fans when we went to Belleville on their home track and beat them there and winning the league at Belleville, you know, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, as I would say, the worst, the worst the team than Belvi, and they normally scored like we couldn't beat them, but uh, mm -hmm. we done it because we've been working as a team, and uh, and that's been awesome, you know. So just the feeling and uh, even the party afterwards, uh, you know, it was a very, very, very nice time. And yeah. I would like to say, even these days, big, big thank you very much. In these days, we had a lot of fans at Coventry, and we worked very good together, and uh, I don't want to miss this time. Yeah, it sounds that's great memories for sure. Um, what riders have been your favourite to team ride with, and why? Mm. Oh, this is a hard question now. My favourite mm. rider for team riding, you know. So mm. I think we. Uh, 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 it's always hard to think, but I had I've been. I think, you know, just in England or all over the world? Anywhere, anywhere you want. Really. Anywhere. So mm. it's... Uh, uh, I personally never really had a, a special runner who would say uh, we're working very good together. Okay. Uh, I have no one really in my mind at the moment. Uh, mm. I would say I'm always... Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter who I'm racing with because I know if you're racing the team, I've got a partner. I have to... He has to help me, I have to help him. Uh, but we had some... I, don't, I never really had like a very good uh, team ride, like a really, like a best pair, I would say. I never really, yeah. I never really had, you know, so I can't yeah. really say, I just... It's a hard question for me now, because okay, you know, yeah. I never had this question. Yeah, Maybe yeah. you have to think a little bit, but at the moment there wasn't yeah, really yeah. anyone who I would... Uh, because I'm always... For me, it was a bad when I was racing. I always changed uh, very often my uh, the position of the team. I went from seven to six, from six to three. You know, it's always uh, so you're always changing the partner. I never really, I never really been in the same position for for a whole year. So, uh, uh, but that was not really. No, yeah, I spoke I to. Um, I don't know if if you had uh, got on with anyone like that at Coventry. I spoke to Scott Nichols and uh, Chris Harris, and they both said yeah. they both mentioned Billy Janeiro. Oh yes, uh, it was uh, to to race together. I, I, but I never raced much with Billy because he, yeah, yeah. we never really had been. Uh, I must say, at the end to race with Billy, this is awesome. You know, I mean, uh, 
doesn't matter if he's against you or uh, he's Billy is a very hard rider. He's the uh, the big fat cunt, I would say. He always be like <laughs> the heavy man. Uh, but uh, to race with him, he's uh, it makes fun. I can say uh, always uh, Billy. And when you think about this, Billy Billy Schneider, he was always like an awesome man to to race with. I spent a lot of time with him when I went over to America mm. uh, to do uh, the USA versus the world. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that's always a quiet meeting. Billy always then. Billy is one of the. He think he's he's winning twenty times now in the American Championship because he's unbelievable quick on those tracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm I love to race to race him uh, at Auburn at the track there. And uh, at the end, we made always a lot of uh, passings, elbows checking, you know, but always <laughs> fair, you know. So yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, he he was a good uh, you know you know he was a good rider to race pair and even you know. I enjoy to race with him. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, you won the European grass track title. Uh, what do you remember about that? And do you enjoy, obviously, the grass track side as well? Uh, that's uh, been in England, you know. So I was winning it in, uh, how called the track? Uh, it's, uh, it's hard to... Uh, uh, how was it called the track? One second, maybe I got it to... Uh, I was really, I you know, I got the list here, you know, where I thought, yeah, I thought, so, it says, I'll bring it one, one second. It two, one fa- second. Two, was it 2011? And you won the European? Uh, uh, yeah, it was, today, you know, European champion. I got like yeah, a European list champion, here, yeah. you know, so oh, right, uh, okay. with all my, you know, just to remember, it's still, it's finished 28 and the long track world champion. So, yeah. but that was European champion 2011. And this is yeah, uh, right, yeah. uh, what I remember from this day. It's been in England at the... Uh, uh, I don't, I don't remember the track. No, let me think. But I can say I know I was wearing, I was wearing this. I think it was this green and white racing suit over there. You know, that's yeah. that's that's I remember. I was winning in this racing suit here. You know, can yeah. you see this? You know, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I think that was the suit. This one or oh, no? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was this racing suit I, I using. Uh, did we you, had did, an awesome. Yeah. Did you have the green in? It was that part of the Simon wig. Thing that you had green on, or yes, yeah, that yeah. the green, green is all well, green, <laughs> you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, he'd been, uh, you know, uh, I've been awesome at this day, I've been so relaxed on this racing day when I was winning the European, the European Grass Track Championship. Uh, I would say I just, uh, I just played with other ones, you know, that being for me, I didn't really any, I didn't been stressed, I had an awesome sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just I woke up. I feel like, hey, come on, boys, we do it now. We win it today, you know. So uh, I didn't be no sweating at all. I've been sitting on the bikes. My boys been working very good. Uh, uh, you know that being just. Uh, I just remember we had some trouble with the starting number at this stage because I had a different back end. I always a bit of an uh, you know I go my own way. And uh, the start marshal or no, no, the the technical control man wasn't happy about my back number, you know. Okay. And, uh, but I was winning the European Championship because I had like you know on the on the, on the quad racing you know they had like a plate on the back of the yeah. and the, the bike is yeah. in the middle on the back on the top yeah. you know they yeah in the middle they yeah. placed uh, you know they placed you can see it here you know normally place the number on here yeah yeah but that's what I had done with my eighty four you know and he said ah oh, you can't put the number on there you know you know, it's too dangerous so I need to put a different position and I I agreed it so we put the number down as I mean that's the way how it is. And then I was winning the European Championship, and afterwards there always been like a uh, like a special heat for the for the city, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these days, you know, I didn't mind. I put my ID, my number on the back. I wrote down European Champion, you know, <laughs> and uh, and then I don't care what he says. So it's just uh, <laughs> so that was an awesome day. Uh, down in the workshop, I still got my uh, the stuff I get from there. So it's uh, wow. I you know. So it was a very you know was awesome you know so another special moment cool um you've obviously uh won many german speedway titles uh six seven is it six seven it must be now six, seven. seven no seven, yeah, yeah. seven 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 okay seven. Seven, seven seven um what do you remember about them and was there any more special than others maybe your first one or what can you remember um, about? yeah <laughs> i would like you know it, it was quite nice to to win the the title number seven, uh, or even I think every single one was very special. You know? mm. I just need to think uh, when I was uh, uh, 
the first one I was winning, I need to, no one, I think the first one I was winning 2000, like that, 2007, no? It's too many of them, you know? So, mm -hmm. uh, the thing. first one, I think it was in, Stral in Stralsund, in the north of Germany, and I've been very happy to win it, you know, just to have the first title, you know, this is uh, really, yeah. uh, super nice. What I even like to be, there are not many riders who have in Germany so many German speedway titles. There's, uh, and it's still the leader is Egon Müller. Egon Müller, he got five speedway uh, uh, titles, you know, German speedway titles. Mm -hmm. And when I had five, I've been on a level with him, you know. And uh, then I made the number six, and then I made the number seven. So it's I will be very hard to catch on this, you know, to yeah, to have a, sure. having a rider who, who making seven uh, speedway titles. And uh, because I'm still in the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, still well, more it was to be awesome had. too. Yeah, yeah, and it's still uh, and it's still uh, nice to beat Igor Müller, you know, because he was the hero. Yeah, very and, good. Uh, and even with the German championships, then the old guys, everyone knows Karl Mayer, or you yeah, know Karl, Karl Mayer. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, yeah. Karl Mayer, he always he hates me because um, and no, in a friendly way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he's, we talk about some stuff, and uh, and Karl Mayer not even got one German speedway title. Oh, so yeah. he got three or four long track. He got four, four, times, four long times track. Long yeah. track he's four times long world long track champion, mm -hmm. but he never could win the speedway championship. And they say, "Hey, Carly, I got everything now. So what you got, you know?" So, <laughs> so he's and he hates him. You know, when we start <laughs> talking about this, and he, yeah. uh, sometimes you know, I say, "Hey, you know, when we like when we walk, when we standing together somewhere, and I say, "Hey, Carly, Mr. Meyer, how many speedway world, how many speedway titles you have from, you know, how many German speedway titles you got?" And he, 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 he hate this question, you know? <laughs> yeah. Good banter between you then. <laughs> no, no, we have a good friendship, you know? But, yeah, good banter, uh, you know, yeah, he, good banter. <laughs> but he, but he, he don't like this question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that's when I got. What, what's been your most memorable race meeting or race uh, to date and something that sticks in your memory still today? Is there anything? Mm. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I can tell you one because I've okay. been racing in 2000, you know, I was a young boy, it was me 2000, I can sing, when I was racing in Sweden, I was racing in Sweden for Hammerby, Stockholm, okay. uh, it was a very technical track, uh, I've been, I had a heat, uh, I had a good day, you know, and uh, it was, in the heat was Rune Holter, uh, Nicky Peterson and Jason Crump. So we had, uh, I would say, two world champions in there. We had Rune, and Rune Holter was winning Very good, the, on the weekend before. Rune Holter was winning the Grand Prix, mm -hmm. uh, and I was the worst skater, but I passed all three riders, and I could win the heat and uh, you know, on my home track in Stockholm. And that been for me and uh, an awesome memory to to win uh, at these days to beat two world champions and. Uh, to uh, to beat the the GP winner from the from from the past week and that been an awesome it was a very nice race you know so that been a quite uh, that been a good one you know so that was yeah, a special one for me. Did you rock the wheelies after that? I hope. Did you give it the yeah, wheelies and that? Uh, yeah, some I gave them some you know so uh, <laughs> they they didn't like it you know so but, uh, <laughs> no. it's the way it is you know when a young boy it's always hard you know when a young boy is coming and beats you you know so this is uh, not the best but that been a good one. Uh, who were your closest friends so far in your speedway career? And was it easy to ever block out the friendship once you were racing as well? Yeah, it's always hard. Uh, yeah. I think I had a very good friendship from, uh, you know, with Chris Harris. Chris Harris. Uh, we had, uh, you know, we had the workshop next to each other. So three, three years in Coventry and then been uh, quite a, uh, you know, we still always, uh, I would say we're still friends, you know. We don't have so much contact, but it's still... You know, we talk quite privately when we see each other. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite nice. Uh, I had even, I'm still very in contact with, uh, uh, with Jonas Kulmikopi. Yeah. He's still uh, quite a nice guy. Uh, uh, we just sometimes see what he's doing. We're calling each other. Uh, what we have else, you know. So there's, uh, I wouldn't say friendship, but I had a very good connection to Nicky Peterson. Uh, okay. Uh, Nicky is, uh, you know, I, I was racing together with him in Stockholm on the track. He was uh, like he's the biggest asshole, but uh, <laughs> I must say privately he is one of the friendliest men I know. Uh, he always helped me. Uh, yeah. He, we've been sitting together in a taxi. We had some good chats to each other, and uh, uh, so that been that been quite good, you know. So 
At oh, the that's end, interesting. Uh, I, didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah he's quite. I, I would say he's privately. He's uh, everyone knows him on the on the racetrack. He's uh, you know when he puts his helmet on, he's you know when he goes on the racetrack, he switch off his brain. You know, he he's a different person. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But you can have the you can have the hardest heat with him, and you can have the biggest argument with him on the racetrack. After race or when you go together uh, with him in the plane, he say, "Hey, oh, fuck! You see what we done? You know, we've been crazy. You know, you know, he just liked it. You know, yeah, you yeah. can punch him before you punched him, and uh, <laughs> at the end, you know, like twenty minutes later, or even when he's off the racetrack, when he's away from the speedway, he's a super nice bloke, and this is, uh, uh, you know, he's a good boy. That's good. That's good. Um, how important is it, obviously, to have a special?" mechanics you've uh, jowled with especially over the years can you say it again we had a short problem with the connection okay sorry um you obviously have to have trust with uh, mechanics yes. has there has there been any certain mechanics that you've jowled with well and trusted and got on oh with well? yes uh, <laughs> I, had, uh, I would say like i talked before even special England is like a, it's a team shepherd you know so shepherd, uh, okay. you know it's the shepherds you know they still at the moment they're still always around Coventry or Birmingham you know yeah. It's a whole family. It's a father and his three sons. Is uh, uh, it's Mick. It's Tommy. Uh, Tommy. Uh, no, I must say. Uh, Tommy, Rico, and yeah. But they're all awesome, you know. Like I would say, that that's the shepherd. You know, they are. Uh, to every single one of them, I have a very good connection. We still good friends. Uh, still with Mick, with the father. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, you know, we texting sometimes, see what's happening. He was for me. Uh, uh, even sometimes when when I need a mechanic in Germany, I, I, I call him and say, "Hey, uh, Mick, can you please you know come to here or there? And can you help me? Is there no problem? You know." So we didn't see each other. Maybe we didn't work together for like a half year, but uh, he, he's flying over and he's standing next to me. And he say, "It feels like you know we are together." So this mm, is uh, that's pretty cool. This is very very nice. Uh, mm. And uh, in Germany, I have uh, now a very good mechanic. It's uh, Michael. He's even like a very friend. We work in science. He's working for me science. I've been on the fifth year now, and uh, it's like a, you know, it's a good team, you know. So it's uh, it's nice. You need to have good boys around you. You need to have a good feeling. Uh, when I don't have a good feeling in my van, I can't race good, you know. So you need to have even it's sometimes half, but speedway is not only racing. It's more, you know. It's more behind. It's the whole. Uh, when you hear in road racing or motocross, you know, they have twenty minutes time, or like they got fifty minutes and five laps. Uh, they got like five or ten minutes time to find their their flow, you know, to find yeah. their, their run, you know. In mm. Speedway, you don't have time to find your run, you know. You must uh, find your run uh, when you go on the racetrack. So uh, when you look on the clock, you, you know, the whole clock, every single sprocket need to work on it. So uh, you can't have time to delete all your problems in your brain, you know. So you need to go there. So you need to have a friendship around you. The mechanics, they need to sit on there. So... Uh, uh, it's very important. The mechanics are very, very important in the speedway sport. Right, brilliant. Um, have you got any regrets so far from your speedway career at all? What do you mean regrets? Uh, uh, regrets, as in, um, is there any times that you feel like maybe you should have done something better, something different to win something you think you should oh, have won? Okay, or yeah. any teams you've rode for that you wish you hadn't? Or anything like that? Any regrets in that way? Mm, I would... Uh... I got regrets, you know. I would love to make a better setup in Poland, you know. I never really, I've been good in Poland yeah. some days, but I never really could make the properly step into the Polish Speedway League. Uh, it's always yeah. been a hard way in there. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of problems over there, even with the payments. And at the end, if you don't get paid, you don't make fun. Yeah. Uh, at the end, I had, uh, you know, that been a bad way. That been, I think I'm very sad for it because I've been quite quick over there. Uh, when I was racing, big, you know, I was racing for Rupnik in the Elite League there, and I've been scoring weekly 10 to 10 to 15 points. Mm-hmm. But if you never get paid for your money, what you get earning, you know, and if you're always running behind your money, it comes a point where, where I have to be a businessman, and I've been fighting with the club, and they are, and that's been always hard. So even then, I make again a step into Poland. I was racing for Krosno, it was second league, and even then they. We had some arguments, and uh, at the end, uh, I had a German championship or some German league, and I said, I'm not racing for you in Poland, I need to race in Germany, it's in my contract. And then they banned me for racing, and uh, we went to court, and uh, they sent me some 
So big invoices, so that being at the end, everything is agreed now. Uh, I, at the end, I was winning against them, uh, but I was sitting it out. So uh, because I put in my lawyers and they they done it, but uh, that thing I would regret this. This is uh, that's a bit bad at the moment to never really make a properly step into the Polish league. So that uh, I've always been there, I've always been raised there, but to really be uh, a Polish uh, team hero, you know, I never really been. So this is uh, I've been most time very individual. Okay, fair enough. Um, can you tell us a funny story from your racing day memories to date? <laughs> a funny story. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, it's not so easy. Like a fun story, you know, we had some... You mean from the racing or even like what, what, what's happening? Yeah, any road trips, any or... road trips or anything. Yeah, anything. Mm. I think we always have like some funny, we always have fun in the van, but at the end <laughs> we, uh, when we on the way and most time we are man's in the way, we say, uh, uh, you say, you can say what's, what's happened in Vegas stays in Vegas. Oh, and, yeah, what's yeah. Ha- and what's happened in the van stays, <laughs> stays in the van. So this is, uh, so this is, <laughs> I, I have some memories, you know, but uh, yeah. this is like uh, it's happened in the van, you know. Or it's okay. No, we had some. Uh, I would say, but you know, we had that. I know I tell you a cool memory, you know. Okay. It was a grass track memory. We, I went to yeah. my first grass track meeting to Nandelstadt, and uh, it was uh, it more, more or less just been fun. And I've been uh, and I just went there the first time, and I. Make practice, uh, and and that they didn't, you know, I forgot to put my spare engine in the van, okay. so I put the long track bike in there, and you know, first time long track and scary, yeah, oh, one engine it's okay. We went out there, and uh, my engine broke in the practice. On the long track, you know, we got practice at ten o'clock, and it's the the race track was one hour away from my home, so I decided no problem, you know, we drive home, we took my van, we drive home, we pick up my speeder bike, but uh, my spare engine or the other engine was still in the speeder bike. So, uh, so you know, my, you know, so I just, uh, we, I've been nodding the van, you know, we put in my speeder bike, I prepared all my tools I have. So I was sitting in the back of the van, you know, with only one bike in there. I was putting out the engine in the t- same time, a mechanic been driving, you know, so oh, like a friend, a friend of mine be driving. Yeah. And then we went to race tech and I had the engine ready, but at the same days, we, and even I forgot my mobile phone. So we just, we've been working. And now I went there, I've been, we finished again and the meeting starts, uh, no, the, the writer's presentation was starting half past one and we been there at the right time. And then, uh, but I get another engine from, other, from, from a sidecar rider. And that'd be quite funny. And I jumped out. I've been ready rushing around when I put my engine in and hey, there's an engine in, you know. Oh, we get someone from friend over here. He has a spare engine, you know. So why are you rushing around so much? And I've been completely sweating, you know, like uh, <laughs> yeah. in the back of the van, you know, all the stuff. And uh, and at the end, I think I was winning this meeting. So that was a quite, uh, was a quite nice day. Bit of a bit of a trip that was then. Yeah. Um. You've obviously represented Germany many times in the Speedway Grand Prix. Uh. What did that mean to you? And your know, your memories of obviously competing in the GP and obviously, do you want to get back into the GP? And yes, I want to be back in the Speedway Grand Prix. Uh, that's the biggest goal. Mm-hmm. And the uh, last years, uh, I mean, I love to represent my 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 country. I love to represent Germany. Uh. At the moment, I'm the only rider who represents Germany on, on, the, on the speed of Compre level. Uh, and I would like to be still the next one again who want to represent the speed of, in the Germany in the speed of Grand Prix. Uh, but it's a very, it's always very tough in there, in the speed of Grand Prix. But uh, I would love to be back there. I've always been fighting very hard to be in the speed of Grand Prix. Uh, if you look back, uh, I know I'm not everybody's darling, and I don't want to be everybody's darling. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the end, uh, I've always been uh, working for every single uh, achievement I've done. I've been working very, very hard for it. I've been working for every every single speed the Grand Prix spot. Yeah. Uh, I get qualified 2014 for the speed the Grand Prix. Uh, I even get qualified uh, this year or last year for the speed the Grand Prix. Uh, but then at the end, with the points, I've been a bit unlucky. Uh, I've been. I had the first uh, Grand Prix reserve spot, yeah. and you know when Greg Hancock got retired, I you know I moved into a speeder Grand Prix, 
Uh, and I say every everyone says I had a wild card, you know, I never had a wild card, I never get picked as a wild card rider. So every single time I've been working very hard to be in the speed of Grand Prix. Okay, so fingers crossed on the future of that as well then. Yes, that's the plan, you know. So yeah. fingers crossed now next year, you know, I have to I would say it's honest, you know, I can yeah. maybe I would yeah. say I'm praying I'm praying for a wild card, you know, that's the way how it is. It's been a very, very, very sad year for me to to be back in the speed of Grand Prix and then uh, even all the problems with Corona, you know, you can't really, in the first moment, you can't really organize the speed of the carrier because, uh, you know, Greg Hancock uh, was quite late when he retired, you know, from the sport or when he say he's quitting uh, racing. Uh, that being, you know, uh, it's very sad for him. I'm very sad that he's not racing anymore, but he's yeah. quite involved in the sport. It's nice to see that he's still in the game. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, to be in the Grand Prix uh, this year was very bad for me, and even then with my accident, uh, to can't compete. It's the way how it is, you know. You have to work for it. But yeah. I know 100% uh, when you look about the Speed Grand Prix, there are a lot of German Speed fans who are following the Speed Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. uh, you could see they're very. I mean, we didn't mean loud so much, but there have been a lot of people who are not traveling to Prague. Uh, a lot of German fans didn't call for Prague because of the Corona. Uh, pandem pandemic problems and uh, quarantine stuff they had when they would come back. And uh, at the end, I only can say Speed of Grand Prix, uh, they need a German rider. Uh, it don't have to be me, but uh, we need to have a German rider. We got a German Grand Prix, so I would say every nation who should uh, who's hosting a Grand Prix should have a, should have a Speed of Grand Prix rider. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Um... You've won a lot as a team rider and as an individual rider as well. Is there? Do you prefer to ride as an individual or part of a team, or do you like both? Or uh, <laughs> at the end, at the end, I like to be a leader. Okay. Doesn't matter, even if I'm individual or even racing in a team, uh, I'd like. I would like to be, or I always like. Uh, uh, I like to be the leader, you know, or okay. even just the uh, the man, like a team captain. I like to yeah, be yeah. to be a team captain. Uh, uh, but um, when I'm a team captain, I'm very strictly. Uh, I even, uh, you know, when you're racing in my team or when you're racing, you know, we have there are rules. You know, we have to work for the rules. We we have points. When we say we go for track walk at seven o'clock, then we go at seven o'clock for track walk, and at ten, they're not ten past seven. When I say seven o'clock, to seven o'clock, uh, and this is very. And we have to build up a team spirit, and this is also important. But at the end, when I can see I was winning now. Uh, it must be 10 German league titles, you know. I was winning uh, league titles with uh, uh, with England. I was winning league titles with Sweden. I was winning league, league titles, uh, not in Poland, but uh, but that being quite nice. So it, it shows uh, on which high level I'm working as a team rider or even as a captain. But I'm very strictly, you know. This is some, sometimes some people can't handle it, you know. But in this case, I must say, I've been building up the when we had the speed, the best pairs, yeah. and it moved over like uh, like as a team racing. We I was building up the Trans MF Pro Race team. Yeah. I was the team captain at these days. I was the team owner, and I was you know not many people knows about this, but uh, mm. uh, I you know my plan was to have, you know I've been the team owner and I've been the team captain and I've been the captain. Uh, I organized everything. I signed the contract with these days with uh, Nicky Pedersen. And okay. I said, Nicky, you know, you know, I know you're free. Uh, are you interested to race for us? And I must say, uh, when you tell to Nicky, seven o'clock, we go for track walk. He's there two minutes to seven because he's also one of the professional riders I know. Mm -hmm. And there's no calling about it. You know, we I sent him the contract and we talk about it. And he say, Martin, yes, there's no problem. I like it. It's very professional. But we got one problem. I can't wear the cap. I can't have a team cap because I sold my one. Is it okay? No problem. We talk about it. We change the contract and we done it. And then, uh, but when I say we got the, the timetable and we say seven o'clock track walk, then we're seven o'clock on a track walk. And this is awesome. And I hate when you agree with some other rider. So we say seven o'clock in like now we all the Facebook group, like the, the WhatsApp groups, you say mm -hmm. seven o'clock. And you know, and your partners are not there, so this is uh, it's bad for team spirit. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, next one I got for you. Uh, personally, as a Swindon Robins fan in uh, uh, in England, uh, my dad and my uncle both race for them. Did you ever at all nearly sign for the Swindon Robins or any other teams in in the British League other than Coventry or Birmingham? Mm, yeah, I've been nearly signed for Pool. Okay. Uh, some years ago, uh, Matt Ford called me, and uh, yeah. we had a long meeting. Uh, 
but at these days, uh, he called me in the bad time. It was 2018, and uh, uh, my wife been pregnant, so uh, so we we I decided to at these days to stay home with the family and, and help her. Uh, okay. It was it was the best decision. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, he called me, and I talked sometimes. I'm not sure. Swinton, I think I've never really been with Peter Bora been in touch sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, but at the end, there's the whole package, uh, and it never really. I would say, you know, Pool was a quite nice. Uh, uh, you know, I nearly, I nearly signed the contract with Pool. You know, so uh, we had nearly everything agreed, and at the end, it's just been the family situation where, where mm -hmm. I decided to, you know, to stay with my wife, you know, and say uh, with my fiance, and so it's uh, to be home, you know. But uh, I nearly had everything planned to be at Pool. I got a friend down there at Pool. Uh, and I could stay at his place, so we're nearly, you know, the whole the whole setup been already been done, but uh, oh, right. it didn't come to it, you know. So, uh, you know, it's not only racing sometimes, you know. In Nice, also, you know, we're racing in England uh, in the old days. You you spend a lot of time over there, so you need to have some, you know, some cool uh, area around or some friendship around there. And I yeah. had, uh, you know, I got some good friend over there down pool, so uh, you know, it would be nice to race there. Well, that was interesting. Didn't know that. Uh, okay, next one. What do you personally feel yourself is your best achievements in Speedway and why? Uh, the best achievement is to winning the New Zealand Grand Prix, you know? So uh, it's a simple way. Uh, I come yeah. there as a nobody. Uh, I went to New Zealand. Uh, I went there on the mission. We had a mission with the team. I had a lot of trouble on the way to New Zealand. Uh, in the plane to New Zealand, uh, there have been some mechanics that have been drinking quite a lot of alcohol. <laughs> of uh, I had some, some of them been sitting directly behind me. Uh, and we had, uh, I told them, uh, please don't, uh, you know, touch my seat so much. And, uh, yeah. they, you know, the bloody chairman, what do you want? What's happening? <laughs> and, uh, you know, at the end, they've been drinking quite uh, a little bit too much. Uh, I had some argument with one of the mechanics. Very heavily, uh, I touched him. Uh, uh, I'll be not so friendly to him, <laughs> and that was okay. Uh, and at the end, some minutes later, the pilot comes back to our cabin area and told us there's no alcohol anymore for any one of you. So, uh, and if you still can't behave, uh, the plane goes down and you need to pay for it. So we've been short before because they've been very. I would say, uh, very bad behavior, you know? So mm. it didn't be nice. And uh, I've been part of the family and I didn't like this because uh, you always see people twice in your life. Uh, so I would like to be a friendly man. And we had a lot of trouble, especially in New Zealand. I was coming there with, like my, with my digital switch. Uh, you know, I was using the rule book so much as I can. It mm. wasn't forbidden. Uh, I had a, at these days, uh, I had a long meeting with Armando Castagna to talk about the, the rule book, and he, Armando, agreed in the meeting together that uh, the switch is uh, allowed, but he would ask me, can you please put it away because uh, it will make too much trouble. So I agreed with him. Uh, we had a very good handshake, and we agreed to work together, okay. uh, but the riders hated me for that. Uh, we put, you know, I could use the switch uh, in the first practice and the second practice because at these days we had Thursday and Friday practice. Yeah. But I had to move. No, I had to took it away for the Friday practice. I think. Uh, New Zealand was not easy because uh, I like to use. Uh, I like to be dressed up very smart and nicely. Uh, we've been traveling together. You know, very professional. I've been one of the only riders these days who had like a completely kitted out pit base in New Zealand, like on the other side of the world, mm -hmm. uh, to be first time over there, but we've been completely kitted out. And even these days, Paul Bellamy says in the, in the riders' uh, uh, meeting, guys, you know, like, look about this German guy. He's the first time here. He got a completely properly pit base out there. That's the way how it should look like, you know? So, mm -hmm. uh, and everyone hates me for that, you know? <laughs> uh, and then we had uh, the Polish guy. Uh, it was not Ullanek, it was... Uh, Give me a second. Uh, I would say we had, I've been in a dressing room and the people, uh, you know, I like to be dressed up always very smart, uh, even like uh, some, I always say like in English, dancing shoes or even like uh, very smart suit shoes I like to wear. Uh, 
Okay. And uh, and the people t- always they've been running out with, with sneakers anything and they didn't like me for that so uh, yeah. I had uh, once I left out there and they completely put my shoes underwater you know in the in the in the dressing room and uh, but I didn't mind I walked out with my shoes and I see uh, <laughs> and uh, I walked out uh, you know barefoot you know uh, and everyone looked about me and I said hey thanks boys no problem you know uh, <laughs> and that's been quite a nice uh, nice achievement when we talk about this I mean. Uh, yeah. And then to go out there and show them how to do it, you know, even uh, yeah. I had one explosion because I knocked out uh, or even I touched the uh, 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 Darcy Ward, you know, and I show you something. Let me walk around short. I show you yeah, something. Yeah, cool, yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, because, because we have a little bit more, you know, so there's uh, like when we talk about this, this, uh, this, you know, I had, uh, if you look about, uh, maybe I can show you in a second, you know, uh, I can now I can turn it around, though. Can you? Yeah, can you see it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, and also just losing a little bit of reception now. Every rider at the the right side. I'm back again now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I can hear you now. Okay. Very so nice. Very nice. For this, uh, for the talk. There have been only, uh, and that's been quite a nice one, you know. So that's yeah, quite a nice. nice. Uh, I pass this picture always, and I say, guys, I done it, and I, I would like to pass. I would love to pass. Uh, I do my own way again, and uh, I will yeah. pass them again with a trophy of winning a speed Grand Prix. <laughs> <laughs> they can see some more. Uh, all my, you know, that's more like all my, my uh, race jackets, jackets you yeah. know, when I was wearing once, you know, race jackets, some some team clothing or some some Smolinski clothing we had, all the some some very old pictures we have here. We can go around a little bit, you know. So that been that been also a nice trophy. It was 1996 when I was, that was the first uh, uh, junior German championship I was winning in 1996. It was a nice uh, nice day to remember, you know. So yeah. A lot of some some team pictures and all uh, all trophies, you know. That's been my team, and I've been winning, uh, you know, the long trip world championship. Yes. Uh, you know, at the, I'll completely left one of my mechanics, and we got the it's a very bad by see this is Stony, you know. He was like for me like like a father, you know. Yeah. He was my heart, but he died two years ago. That's been very sad, and uh, but we had an awesome an awesome memory day, you know. Yeah, this for is, sure. Uh, this is like I must call it this a big one, you know. So this is. Uh, no, this is the 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 black hat from my, my movie, you know, Speed Mart and Glory. We done, so you know, it's quite nice. So and we yeah, are very you know, nice, very we nice. We need to go back, and we have everywhere, everywhere. We got some. That's you know, lovely. Oh, you know, everywhere in this room, you know, we can even some. I can tell you, I show you something. Oh, you know, too much. You know, the people should see some. Even mm-hmm. here, you can see some old old guys. You know, I like to have old engines. You know, so yeah. that's a Mac. That's an old chap. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, Wow. And I got even. I even got a bike for it, but I had no time to build it up. And there's a uh, like an old. This is like an, a drinking machine, you know. So <laughs> yeah. if you go out for party, that's you know? brilliant. So that's even, brilliant. Yeah, so you drink machine. So put the big beer <laughs> bottle on the bottom and have a party, you know. So, <laughs> and I think maybe this is one of the quite a nice. This this picture that's you nice. think this. That's even was uh, you know my first Speedway 500 TCM bike, you know. So yeah, this right. is uh, nice little nice. Axo uh, helmet. <laughs> Yeah, there we are. I know. So that was uh, in the old days. One oh, of my motocross sixties. Sixty. Yeah, that was 1995. You know, when I was, yeah. uh, you know, that my sponsor Martin Hoover, he, you know, he bought me this bike. It was quite a nice, nice time. You know, so quite, uh, quite. That's some nice things to to remember. You know, he was my sponsor. You know, and this is, uh, you know, for my, you know, for my kids. You know, so just the best rider. That's nice. And there we, we can. Yeah, can you see this? That was. Uh, uh, you know, very, 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 very old pictures. You know, this is from the whole team. You know, when I've been racing here, this is uh, uh, yeah. here is PW50. Like, oh, yeah, the automatic, yeah, yeah, or, and then it was a half automatic, you know, 19, oh, was it? Yeah, oh. you know, 19, 1993 or something must it be? You know, so that's that Sin Salo kit, is that? Sin Salo? Yeah, Sin Salo kit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, so yeah, I know the Mercos kit, so, yeah, they were, you know, so. And then uh, even here we have some. Uh, there we are. That's a team that was winning like a nice long trick individual race, you know. So yeah. quite cool. And even 
that's also quite a nice picture to remember, you know. So this is, uh, even it's very close to England, you know, it's, this is Mike Waltz, you know. It's, he's, a, he's an ex-Formula 1 rider. He was racing 72 in the Formula 1. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I started to met him, uh, you know, as a friendship over like, uh, over a common two guy. And we're still very good friends. I'm very in contact with him. Yeah. And he wrote me down, you know, Martin, you're hot on the speed of bike, but I hot too, <laughs> hot too. But, uh, and he's uh, yeah, right. he's a good he's a good old bloke you know he's a good old uh, you know yeah and he's still got some uh, we got to make a trophy room now you know we got all the some golden helmets on the top there yeah I love that. Really nice and uh, there are the two uh, the two glass bottles are very nice because that's from the that's from Pado Bitsi you know so oh, Pado yeah. Bitsi yeah. all the golden helmets you know so it's quite nice, nice. Uh, and we have some uh, the gold the golden band, you know. I was winning some. It's from Old King. It's my home track, you know. Yeah. It's uh, the golden band is like the golden the golden ribbon, you know. Yeah, the golden ribbon. Oh, English, right. you know. So that's uh, I was winning, you know. I think, but I miss one. I think I'm not sure. And uh, then we go more further on here on the bottom. It's all my. It's also quite a nice picture, you know. Um, it's Ty Wolfenden, you know. So oh, I was good. winning, you know, together two long track world titles when he was winning. Yeah. And one year later, we've been, uh, you know, he was, he was, he was, had an accident, and I had an accident, you know. So, and here can you see all this, all the, all the gold medals, medals you know. So nice. from every, every single, you can go there a little bit more. Yeah, you can see all, you know, FEM long track world here, FEM long track world championship, you know. So FEM team long track world championship on the opposite side is always the year 2017. You know, then we have got this is the world championship. This is the second, you know, this is uh, FEM long track world championship, uh, second place, you know. So mm -hmm. all the all the trophies, what we have, and we all, even there must be oh, the nice. crazy shields also some there, what we have here. You know, it's, yeah, I just wrote it down Sky Sports Elite League runner up 2013, you know. So oh, nice. then we have the, you know, this is the European Championship. No, that was the track racing European Championship pairs. Uh, when you can uh, here can see here. yeah I can see that yeah. but I would like to look where we got the English one you know so this is uh, I also think I have some metal from the English league what is the interest for the English fans you know so, uh, <laughs> yeah here this is uh, yeah Swedish championship Al Svenskan but I want to see U -M -U -M. this must be England you know yeah UK KO Cup twenty two oh, knockout seven cup, yeah, uh, yeah. knockout cup you know I miss some you know there's some. Uh, that's the knockout cup what we have elite league 2007 you know elite league. So, elite, yeah. elite league champion and i miss some of them but i'm not sure where they are they're somewhere you know so uh very nice but uh you know that's a little bit of an you know and we have some more you know so in the workshop on the bottom there's a little bit more so uh if you have a little bit more time i'm not sure how long we can talk but uh you know yeah. i can walk down it i can show you a little bit more you know so yeah brilliant i really appreciate you doing that enjoyed that that was nice i think that's my best tour so far yeah it's easy you know so you know yeah i had a motocross uh, chap brian jorgensen in denmark and he showed me all his helmets in a in a case like a glass oh, okay that was really nice as well but yeah that's my best tour so far I really that was really cool yeah the only miss uh, the only thing that i'm missing at the moment is all my my my, my bikes you know I still yeah have some. i got a garage but i have still some bikes in there Mm -hmm. And I even my board, uh, I have still, I have still my first 500 CCM bike. Uh, I oh, never sold it. Uh -huh. um, I'm still have, uh, you know, I still have my long track world championship bike. Uh -huh. I still have my Speedway Grand Prix bike from 2014. Yeah. Uh, but uh, some of them I sold to a sponsor. But mm -hmm. when, because I never had space for it. But uh, maybe, but I sold it with a contract. I can buy it always back. If I want to have it back, I get it back. So this is oh, that's uh, good. That's good, yeah. it's quite a nice, uh, nice stuff. And also, I just, I just done last year. I was winning 1998 the 80ccm German Championship, and uh, and this bike I had, I bought back. So uh, you know, so it's just, uh, just still in parts the bike, but you know, I want to have it. I know I, you know, have this bike back. So no, we just have to remember to get all the British fans to remember that someone must have these Birmingham. Yeah, there was Kevlar's. a Birmingham race Someone must have from them. 2011, I think, could it be, you know, 2011 or 2012. So hopefully someone will definitely see this, hopefully, and they can get back to us and uh, hopefully yes. we can get that sorted. That'd be good. Okay, um, another question for you. Who would you say were the three best riders that you've ever competed with in your career to date? Uh, 
if you had to say? Uh, Tony Rickardson. Tony Rickardson, yeah. He was awesome. Uh, yeah, really cool. Really good. And we had the three best riders. Uh, uh, Thomas Golub. Thomas Golub. Class. Tony, Thomas Golub, and now we are number three. Mm. Uh, oh, question now. Number three mm. is... Uh, uh, <laughs> good riders are complete. This is a hard, hard to. Uh, you wrote so many greats, haven't you? Yeah, they're all, they're all awesome, you know. So Nikki, we have, uh, Nikki, Nikki, I suppose, Nikki, quite Yeah, Nikki is. Uh, he's, diff- he's, he's different. He's different. Different, yeah, yeah. He's different. He's different. Definitely yeah. different, yeah. Uh, it's very hard to see this, uh, say there's a rider, the best riders we know. It's just, But the, these days, I've been a very young boy, you know, and I've been racing against them. Uh, you know, I know I love to beat Tomasz Golub and I've done it in the Polish league, so <laughs> and the fans hated me for it. Uh, even to race with Tony, he was like always, uh, you know, if you pass him sometimes, you know, it was not easy, but he always was coming back. So, this is uh, but who we had as number three, it's um, it was nice to race, like I would say on the long track, I say Jonas Kilmakopi. He was, uh, you know, he was an awesome, especially long track, you know. Yeah. We had some, I really enjoyed to race with him on the long track. He beat me at the end, but he'd been world champion and I've been second, but uh, we had some awesome races together. Okay, nice. Um, if you could give some good advice to any youngster out there who wants to become a pro speedway rider, what would it be? Uh, keep it simple. Go away a little bit from the phone. Uh, don't tell me, hey guys, here, you know, I'm on Instagram, I'm the cool man, I'm racing Speedway. It's not interesting <laughs> when you're a young boy, you know, at the yeah, end. Uh, yeah. Keep focus on your racing. Uh, yeah. Don't moan about uh, your material, you know, at the end. Uh, when you're a young boy, you need to learn so much. You can't say, oh, this engine is bad, and this engine is bad. You know, it's not about the engines. To 99 pros, and it's all about you. Uh, be happy with this, what you have, and uh, make the best out of it. So this is, uh, and try to keep it as simple as you can. Mm-hmm. So speedway is at the end, you know, very very simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, but mostly we make it not simple for the mm-hmm. riders. So even the mechanics is, oh, we need the new bikes, we need this new. Uh, when you make it as simple as you can, is the best, you know. So mm-hmm. this is, I would say, uh, keep it simple, enjoy it, uh, don't play, don't play around too much. Just sit in the bike and have fun and. Uh, and just do laps, laps, laps. And what I'm seeing on the young boys very often, uh, they're going out on the track. They're making a when they go for practice, they're making a practice start. They're doing maybe one lap or maybe even a half lap, like a practice start again. So how they can go on the bike and get a feeling for the bike. They should go out and do 20 laps. They should race so much, so long time until the fuel is empty, and then they can say, oh, you know, the bike don't feel so good. So it's. Uh, uh, they should just race. Okay, brilliant. Let is the it, baby run. Let it run. <laughs> well, is there any other sports you enjoy watching or doing? Any other sports? Uh, I like to watch uh, any kind of motorsport. Uh, I mean, I'm from Germany. Here's football, very important, but I'm not a big football fan. Okay. But I like to follow follow the motorsport. I like to follow MotoGP. Yep. Uh, I've been, when you talk about his motorsport, I'm quite good friend with Carl Kutschlow. Uh, he's racing now at uh, Tech 3 Yamaha, you know, he's injured at the moment. Uh, we had a lot of contact back in the days when I was racing for Coventry. Uh, uh, it's a very close, uh, I can say, you know, his sister was my girlfriend okay, so cool. when I was in England. So that, that's the reason why we had that. These days he's been racing British Superbike. Mm. He was winning a 600 British Superbike and he was racing a uh, Super Sport. He was winning and he was winning a Super, no, he didn't win the Superbike. But he comes second or third, and then he jumped over to the MotoGP. So, uh, and that's I follow. You know, I follow what he's doing, what's happening. I follow the motocross guys, uh, Max Nagel. You know, because yeah. we've been racing together. Uh, it's always I mostly follow the racing sports where I know people. You know, even where I have a friendship to to riders. Uh, I was racing uh, World Superbike. I was following Marcus Reiterberger. He's a German guy. Mm-hmm. So, or even Dunlop, you know, Michael Dunlop, you know, I met him once, so we've been had a quite oh, good yeah. chat, and uh, 
on some vintage car racing and even I've been to uh, when I was in England I always spent a lot of time on vintage car racing I went to like to, to Silverstone Classics uh, I went to the Goodwood members meeting uh, so that all the all the good stuff and even some 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 race tracks like Brands Hatch uh, when I had some free days I went there so I met a lot of people um, and even this is so always well, I always follow the people I know uh, right, okay that's interesting um, do you actually personally follow the British Speedway at all at the moment? Did you uh, spot that, obviously, you've probably seen the, the comeback that Jason Crump was going to be doing and Nicky Pedersen was coming back. Uh, I think Everson and Peter Kildman were coming back. It was going to be quite interesting this year. Yeah, I mean, they 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 changed their mind a little bit. I mean, mm. the, even it's, uh, for me personally, it's, uh, when I look back about 2005, six and seven at Coventry, uh, how many fans we had there and uh, what's happening now. It's very sad to see. Mm. Uh, I follow the English speed a little bit, not too much, you know, but that they mostly uh, follow a lot uh, the situation about the Coventry Stadium. Uh, I must say, fingers crossed, uh, I like said before, for Jeff Davies, uh, he's working very, very hard mm -hmm. uh, to be, uh, you know, to be, uh, to be back at Coventry. We can race there again. Uh, it was nice to see to be so many top boys going back to the English league because when I was starting 2005 in the English uh, in the English elite league, uh, mm -hmm. I had out of uh, out of 15 speedway Grand Prix riders, uh, there's been 14 like uh, racing in the English league. Mm -hmm. So that's been very very nice. The only one who didn't race in the English league was Thomas Kolop. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't he didn't have to race there. So that's been uh, you know that's been quite good. So. Uh, it would be nice to see the English uh, league back in the days where it, you know where it was, you know. So, yeah. but every single one have to be work a little bit harder over there. I just say it's a hard way. But then I went to to Arena Essex uh, ten years later when I was racing again for Birmingham, and uh, the dressing room still looks the same like ten years ago, mm -hmm. and it smells the same, and you can't really dress as a rider, uh, or even when you see sometimes some toilets where uh, I mean, we are man. It's no problem as a man, but you need to keep the kids happy, and the kids shouldn't touch all the mm. all the dirty things. And even the women, they want to sit down uh, mm. on a clean stuff. And mm. I've been some English race techs. I didn't want to be my girl, you know. So uh, <laughs> I want to bring my girl to be there because uh, they may be missing something there. So and this is sad to see, but I know even the situation. Most time the speedway guys are not the owner of the stadium, mm. so they're not allowed to do anything. So it's always a very hard situation. But at the end. Uh, they should support each other and uh, and try to be back there. You know, it would be nice to see the English league growing up again. Uh, the actual question is: Would you would would you actually re be interested or return to British Speedway at any point? I was thinking about this, and even I had some calls. Like like I say before, with Poole, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Matt Ford, you know, uh, it didn't been so. You know, it was twenty eighteen. Uh, now with the new racing days, uh, Monday and Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. Thursday as well. Isn't it? Oh, yeah, some, but uh, yeah. it's good. You can you can plan a little bit better your life. Yeah, so that's yeah, quite it's quite nice. Yeah. Uh, it's permanent. That's quite good. Uh, I don't mind, but at the end you have to look what is underlying. You can race over there, mm. uh, and you need to, you know, at the end you can't only race just to, you know, and the young boy, young days I've been racing speedway just to. You know, just to be racing speedway, you know. Yeah, and I was, yeah, yeah. Uh, but now I got a family. I need to pay for the family, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I need to buy some food, and and you have yeah. to earn some money under the, you know, on the line. Yeah. And this is sometimes hard with all the travelings because the travelling goes very expensive, uh, yeah. you know, and the, all the levels are very high. So this is very hard to to make this at the moment. But who knows, you know, what's happening, and uh, everything can happen. So it's got to make financial sense, obviously, as well. Yeah, it's have to be working, you know, but me, yeah. I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I'm quite good based here in Germany now, even without racing this year and uh, with this accident and with uh, with the coronavirus, uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm feeling quite okay because, uh, you know, i got 10 working fingers, they're working <laughs> very good, I know how to do some engines, vintage car repairing, so uh, I'm quite busy at the moment. Okay, I've got a few, just a few more questions for you. The next one I got was, uh, you seem to be very organised and professional and have a lot of great sponsors. Is that something that you've always put a lot of time and thought into during your career? Yes. I spend a lot of time in my marketing. I spend a lot of time to be with the sponsors. I spend a lot of time for the sponsors. For me, it's a sponsor, not only a man who gives some money. It's like, for me, it's a giving and taking. And I want to yeah. give them something back. Yeah. And uh, nearly every single sponsor, even they pay me some, some, some of them, they put some small wages on me, but they... Uh, 
and pay me like like small things but even for them i try to be uh the best supporter to support the sport and uh and even they want to be recognized though i'm sponsoring like you know look about this man i'm sponsoring mr martin zwolinski mm-hmm. uh, and i have sponsors they they wish me the last uh I would say one of my older sponsors is Supin Motorsport. They even the most, or even is Daytona. Daytona Racing Shoes mm-hmm. with Helmut Fry. Uh, he was sponsoring me. Oh, uh, that been. Pff, uh, uh, I'm I'm sponsored with from Daytona signs. I must be uh, 1995, I think. Uh, so we have a long term cooperation together. We have a long term friendship. Uh, uh, and I spend a lot of time for the marketing, and I'm always, always, always trying to improve. It shows. It lo- looks very professional. It does look good. I see that you obviously get a lot of sponsors outside of the um, motorcycle world, as if you if you say, even including I see like the McDonald's and things like that. Is that that's pretty cool to do? Very... Um, yeah, this was one of my uh, at the end. You know, I had a manager, but. Uh, I'm quite good. My own manager, I think I'm quite a good marketing man. You know, I learned <laughs> a lot from Eva Müller. Yep. Uh, for me, I'm always interested in companies who are, I want to bring the companies to the sport, you know? Yeah. In the speed race, very often, there are maybe like five kind of sponsors and, and every rider want to ask a little bit to, can the fan come and can he sponsor me? But uh, my focus was always to be, to go some completely opposite way. When 50 people walking left, I'm the only one who are walking right. And, uh, you know, that's the reason why I got some you know, sponsors out of the sport. Or oh, nothing, we have nothing to do with Speedway, really. Yeah, very, very good. Very good. Uh, showing the way out should be done. Um, what have you been doing yourself lately? Obviously, during the virus pandemic, uh, have you been getting to ride at all? And what's your plans for the rest of this year and into next year? Mm, at the moment, you know, it's just uh, my plan is to be uh, at the first day. My plan is to, was to be back in the speeder bike and be ready for a speeder Grand Prix. Uh, I've been after my accident, you know, when I broke the hip, it been a very, very nasty accident. I think it was one of the worst accidents I ever had. Mm. When a doctor, when he laid on in, in the, in you know, in the hospital uh, on the intensive care station, and the doctor says, "Hey, Mr. Molinsky, uh we can't. Uh, it don't look good at the moment." Uh, I must tell you, it could be 70% you walk and 30% uh, you sit in a rolling chair or you walk on sticks. So that was a hard way for me. But uh, we went a good way and uh, everything is okay. But the plan was to be ready for a speed Grand Prix. But I couldn't do it. Uh, I went for the rehab center and, uh, you know, I tried to be, go to a special rehab center where the German football national team is even going there. But everything what they've done, uh, I would say we've done a little bit too much for the body. It makes a very big step backward. So uh, it was very bad for me. I was falling a little bit in a hole the past weeks to be very down because uh, I lack being very bad. But now I would say I'm a good way. And uh, uh, we had a meeting last uh, on Friday with my team. And we agreed that we want to be back on the bike uh, middle of October or even beginning of October. So we prepare everything to be back on the bike in October. And our plan is to be make some, uh, first I want to see how I'm feeling. Mm. I'm getting some special shoes from Daytona uh, to help me with my nerve problems. Okay. And then uh, we go out and do some, I would like to do some real, real racing practice session, not go for practice, even go out, come in. I would say I go to Lancet now and I, I want to do in two hours, I want to do, seven heats, you know, like just uh, we do a practice in seven heats. So do like a, like a very a properly practice plan, you know, yeah. just uh, to to work it as a really race, you know, to be mm-hmm. out, go racing, go back out, maybe make some double heats, you know, like in English league, do some seven heats, or eight heats. So uh, go in and out again. So uh, that's the plan. So uh, when I obviously rang you earlier, you were doing some uh, engines and that. Is that what you've been doing as well with your time as uh, yes, uh, I would. I can I, You know, I. I don't really <laughs> want to say this, you know, but I can say uh, yes. I'm an engine tuner, and uh, even I've been uh, learning in motorcycle mechanic. I think uh, not many speed riders, uh, even having a really, that never really went to school to learn something. They just uh, uh, like the the Aussies. They just come over and race speedway, and they never know how to go to work. You know, so. <laughs> or even uh, I met Billy Hemmerly, you know, like when I went to America, and he's a Martin. Uh, I start to work now and uh, sorry, but I'm totally knackered. Uh, you know, I have to get up every day in the morning at seven o'clock and uh, 
And then I'm back home at five o'clock uh, after I'm done my job and I'm totally lacking. You know, I can't do anything anymore. You know, I'm totally, I'm not used to this, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'm, you know, I was learning motor heavy mechanic. I'm still uh, always been in touch in the business. And uh, uh, I like to do engines. I got 10 fingers. They're working good. I do a lot of, uh, like, at the moment, I do a lot of engines for hobby, hobby riders, you know. Okay. I don't really have uh, any rider who I'm just uh, supporting at the end. I do my own engine since uh, nearly nearly two years now, mm -hmm. so that's quite nice. Uh, last winter, I bought the. Uh, I had the opportunity to bought uh, the completely workshop from Jan Andersen. Jan Andersen was, uh, yeah. uh, you know, Jan Andersen. He was one of the best engine tuners uh, the last ten years. Mm -hmm. I think always uh, he was in last ten years always top three in the speed Grand Prix. Uh, I could buy a lot of knowledge from him. It's not only the machines I bought; it's even the the, the knowledge I have. His, uh, you know, his his, his 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 box of gold he had in his brain. You know, uh, he gave me uh, he gave me a lot of tips, and this is quite interesting. But I'm also quite interested in vintage cars, so I'll have a uh, quite you know. When you ring me before, you know, I was done a KTM LC4 engine, so it has nothing to do with speedway. It's like just a just a <laughs> KTM. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I do at the moment everything what comes in, you know. So and it's uh, I got a quite good network. Uh, you know, we can lo look down. You know, we got everything at the moment down there. You know, before we talking too much. You know, yeah, we no. do it simple again. We go on the workshop again. I show you some stuff more. You know, so we uh, I'll take the phone like that. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll do everything at the moment. You know, there's not much. Uh, everything comes in. We have customers and uh, preparing. Uh, I've lost you at the minute. Oh, there we are. Oh, we are we go in here now. Yeah. One second, sweet Sean. Here we are. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you uh, now. Yeah. Oh, the workshop now. Engines. My engines are. I lost a little bit of reception Every at the minute. The Julian, this engine I finished today. Mm -hmm. I uh, should be quite okay, good down, you know. We again. Oh, we got a connection problem, huh? Yeah, a little bit. It's cutting out a little bit. <clears throat> oh, it should it should be quite good on here. If not, I can switch uh, over to. It's um. It's better now? Yeah, it's a little bit better now, yeah. Okay. All my engines in this direction where we can walk through and uh, there are, you know, oh, the work is coming in, you know, there's some, some the carburetors to do, you know, and here we, at the moment we got, this is like customer stuff, it's a BMW, uh, uh, it's a R, it's you know, from 1970s, you know, you know, it's a R, R80 straight seven, <clears throat> it's an I had service, you know, so I'm getting a completely service, you know, so uh, putting some new valve seats in and uh, make it nicely again and, uh, you know, working on it, you know, uh, some carburetors to do, so there's always some, and now, you know, what do you rang me today, you know, so there's my, my washing room, like a high pressure, high pressure parts clean. Yeah. You know, and all we need to have, you know, so that's the, uh, Just lost it for a minute. You pick me in the do again. It's okay. Can you see some? Oh, can you nice. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, it's a little bad. You know, this is then the, you know, so there's speed always rate. some. This is, this is, this is for even for, yeah, it's an high speed bike. I need to make a completely like service. It's sold for a museum, you know. So oh, in yeah. the back here, we got something, something very, very special, you know, but this is covered. It's also like, is this, the, this is a winter chop, it's a BMW R20. It's from 1973. 
and yeah, yeah. it's getting a full restor it's getting a full restoration in winter you know so this is uh Wow. But the, the customer already parked it here. So this is, uh, you know, yeah, there's always a some planting and honing stuff and uh, always stuff to do. Very nice workshop. Always stuff to do. So there's a uh, famous 84. Yeah, it's quite a nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got nearly, I think, yeah, I want to, you know, I have some ideas. You know, the only, only thing what I miss at the moment is my power station. Yeah. I still need to pick it up from, uh, I still need to pick the power station up from Jan Andersen, uh, yeah. but uh, there we are, you know. So there's always some. That's yeah, quite... here we are, you know. We can see some more trophies. Ah, yeah, you know, yeah. So all my all my stuff in here is. This is some very special trophies we have because every trophy is over on the top there, like a championship trophy, you know. So yeah. German champion, and here we have, you know, like a European track champion in. Uh, where it was, uh, uh, I, very hard to read now. European, uh, where it was, there's no, isn't it? Didn't, don't written down where it was, you know, the trophy. Uh, well, this is this is the trophy from the European Championship in England, uh, host country England, uh, but there's no name on, on of the track on it, you know, so this is it's back, you know. Uh, well, but all the trophies, you know, at the middle, the best one in New Zealand, you know, so it's in the middle, so it's quite nice. Uh, that, like that, yeah. Yeah, there's all, this is, uh, this must be the English one, no? Yeah. This is the English League title, you know, so here. It's also quite a small one or a nice one, so. And if you turn around, there's my racing vest from the, when I was winning the World Championship, there's a big, you know, World Championship banner, you know. And yeah. This is the this is the 2018 World Championship uh, corner, you know. So as all the all the trophies, you know, from the 2018 season well, when I was winning the World Championship. So very there nice. we are, you know. So this is uh, very nice workshop. Very again. nice, very nice workshop. So we had a small, so we had a small look around, you know, what we have all, you know. So just go. And then we got an office and everything. And we got, I can show you some more, you know. I got some stuff that I can show you. Yeah. And the connection is quite okay. We walk around, you know. <laughs> There's my office, you know. So then we can, uh... yeah, just arrived, you know. It's quite a nice new helmet. Very, uh, it's just freshly flag. painted, you know. It's a German flag and it's, uh, it's the, the helm of honor, you know. Like it's just, we put some, there are some names on, like all of my team is my mom, my grandma. Uh, Walter, he's uh, you know a very good old friend. He was owner of the Vintage Car Museum, yeah. Stoney and Elmer and Lee. So this is uh, you know some some nice helmet. You know, just just arrived, I think uh, you know last week, and I just need to post it now. And you know, so. and here we got some more like uh, uh, if you can say we have here some more trophies. You know, so everywhere like a pro trophies here. Yeah, yeah. There we are. You know, make some marketing. <laughs> yeah, what is quite nice, but it's hard to see. That's all glass trophies. Yeah, what you can see here, and all these, all these glass, these old trophies. Yeah. That's uh, from the German Federation for every, for any single. You only get it when you're winning a championship. You know, some people okay, having yeah. maybe they're happy when they have one of them. I think I have. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, some more of them. So this is every. Uh, long track world champion, German team champion, all the all the trophies there, you know. So if you normally that's the way into the into the office, so you know, so let's straight see what's happening when they walk in. So you need a full time polisher. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I got a uh, you know I got a cleaning woman, you know she's uh, oh. she's coming only once a month, so she's uh, somebody's. <laughs> but to make all the trophies, this is sometimes not worth it, but uh, it's the way how it is, you know. So. <laughs> Okay. Very good. Okay. I just need. Uh, I forgot tonight because I've been busy. I just need to switch off my. Uh, my compressor. Here we are back again. Next question. All right, I've only got a couple more, but um, basically one of them was: uh, Is there any sh shout outs you want to make? Have you got like a? So I know I know you do a lot of uh, merch, your own merchandise and stuff as well. So, is there like a website of yours that everyone can go on? And yeah, yeah, no, that's quite good. You know, if you do... hold on, I've just lost you a second. Hold on, I've just lost you then for a minute. So okay, give me one second. Okay, I'll just sit down again. <clears throat> 
Who back again? Yeah, yeah back again. again. Back again. No, so, yeah, uh, I was just you saying about out, you know. Yeah. We got we got everything, you know. If you want, you can go out. You can have uh, t-shirts, polo shirts, sweatshirts, you know, like some very cool stuff. And uh, check out my homepage uh, www.snr9speedperformance.com and uh, look on the bot top right. You know, you can see everything. You go in the shop and uh, you can buy everything. And even for the young boys, what we have, I have even on my homepage like a used part shop. So when I have some old stuff, old engines. Uh, there's a, it's called Gebrauchteile. The bad thing is my homepage is not in English, but the uh, used parts, I mean, you can you can search on the top, so you should, you should, you should, you should get it. So I'm always, uh, all the old stuff I have, I saw old wheels, uh, old parts, old clutches, what I don't use anymore, it always goes in there. So even it's quite good for the juniors. Uh, you don't have to buy everything new. Sometimes it's uh, some... Some good, uh, some good used parts from some riders are sometimes better. You know, I can tell you, or I know about that because you know, our buying used things from Harris. You know, <laughs> exactly so, uh, that. And that beat him with it. You know, so <laughs> exactly that. Is you got like a so a social media uh, usernames and stuff for people to check you out? You on Facebook? You can just, this is quite simple. I'm on Facebook on under Martin Smolinski. It's simple mm-hmm. way. You can check me out on the Instagram on the Martin Smolinski hashtag eighty four. And you can check me out on Twitter under Martin Smolinski. So if you search my name, I think you always will find me. You know, so that's uh, it's quite easy. Right, I really appreciate this, uh, Martin. Uh, that's the best uh, tour I've had of the workshop, the Cavalars, the trophies. It's been amazing. It's not bad. I mean, that's that's really, really cool. Here for. Really cool. That's nice. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully also the fans yeah. all like it. And uh, at the end, we need to support the sport. Uh, it's even uh, yeah, we really appreciate to talk to you. Uh, was quite nice and uh, you know I have hopefully a lot of you know fans can see this yeah I'll obviously tag you and everything and send you the link and everything once I've uh, put it up and uh, yeah it's been amazing Uh, absolute pleasure mate really appreciate it no problem always welcome top man man and I really appreciate it thanks ever so much perfect thanks thank you very much top man thank thank you man